Hello everybody and welcome to another Minecraft Bedrock video. Today we're looking at this wonderful cave design. Oh isn't that lovely? Right, that's the end of the video. No, I'm kidding. Of course with me with a cave, it's going to have some redstone in it. So to anybody just passing through, this just looks like a normal cave. But to whoever builds it, we know different because if we grab a lever and put it down here and flick it on. As you can see the whole cave transforms in under four seconds into this wonderful little almost base would you call it with a cave entrance here nicely hidden away to our real cave. So let me just walk you through some of its features. We have our crafting bench here. We have an automatic furnace here as well. So we need to put our meat or uh, ores in there and then we put our coal in here. As you can see it gets smelted up and then it will be placed into this chest when it's done. Also we have bulk storage as well. Have our wonderful items here and enough to put anything in. And then when we're done, all we do is flick the lever again, the door gets placed back and again under 4 seconds our room returns to normal. Nice and quickly. So we'll take a look at the redstone now. Now before we, you panic and think, oh my word, that's so confusing, it really isn't. It's just big, and hence that <laughs> makes it look quite confusing, but it's not, honestly. I'll run you through it in a minute. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to strip down all the stone blocks, and I'm just going to run through how it works. So let's see how this contraption works. Now it looks a bit of a mess. I could make it a bit more compact, but I left it like this so we could actually see what was happening. So... As you can see, the, the lever is on at the moment, and we're in the cave mode, as it were. So when we flick it off, the blocks get retracted back, and now we're in your base mode. One small little challenge I had, it wasn't a bad, a hard challenge to overcome, but it was one that was a little more prevalent than I would imagine, was how to get these blocks like this. So, as you can take these two here, Obviously they have pistons underneath. So I want them to be the first to extend because I don't want the the room moving across when they're down because that'll break. So I want them the first to extend like this. But I also want them the last to uh, retract because if they retract now straight away that's going to break it as well. So to overcome that all we've had to do is put this little pulse extender down here which then runs into it. So you can see, it gets powered straight away. And then it gets the last thing to unpower because of that pulse extender. And with these ones, it's just the inverse with a redstone torch. And obviously, the same as happens with the door at the back, but that happens on the different cycle. So when we flick the lever here, we can see the ceiling gets displayed up here and the floor here and then the two walls on this side you can see the order it happens like that now these ceiling blocks here also do a, a very important function and now to, to understand that a little clearer I've made this little model over here so it's, at the moment we're in our base mode this little square is our room we can imagine that and we have to have an order so this one first that puts the walls into place. You can see these two are now stone. And then this one. Now the reason that we have to have an order, and we can't just go this one then this one next, is because of the seam blocks. If you see here, if we press that on now, this would break. Because there is no seam blocks here. So we have to put this one over first. So now that we have seam blocks, and then that one. It's actually something to push, which, we, which we're not pushing the doors, not the doors, the walls or the floors, because that would break it. So that's why we have to do it, and that's why we have to have a, a an order. So we see floor and floor and ceiling, and then walls, and then the opposite. We have walls first, and then this one goes across. Now, if that's still a bit confusing, I'm, I do apologise. I have tried to make it simple. So as you can see, when I turn this off, this redstone torch is going to turn on, which sends signal into this dropper hopper circuit here which sends a flash 
or race down through this comparator. Which powers these, like this, in a line? So that would be the floor, and at the same time does the roof as well. Then it goes up this little redstone line here, and then into the one which goes down. And the opposite happens when we turn this lever on. So pulse goes through here. First of all, it does the up, and then does the side. Now I can make this redstone a lot more compact by putting it inside the door, but the problem with that would be I would have no room for these pistons to go to make it look like a real Minecraft cave. If it was just a normal room, no problem, but because I wanted to make it look like a cave and have like rocks jutting out and things like that, I had to do it that way. Just a word of warning for anyone who wants to build something similar to this, if you are building it as I am on Windows 10 or PE, just make sure your prototype is working first. Make sure that they actually have the seam blocks in place because it is so annoying when it breaks because then you have to reset all the pistons placed under all the blocks and it could be a right faff and no one wants to have that. So just bear that in mind when making it because it is a rather large thing to make. So obviously I'm not going to do a full tutorial on this uh, build today just because it's too big and hopefully I've showed you a little glimpse on how to make it yourself. So thank you so much for watching. Um, if you did enjoy this video, please give us a like. And if you really loved it, make sure you subscribe with that wonderful subscribe button. Anyway, I'll catch you all guys in the next one, and I'll see you later. Bye!